Okay. Five o'clock. Time for watch me work. Yeah. Are we ready? I, we're ready. No, I was just about to say the anecdote that every time I think of Earth Day, I think of plays for the plague year, and I think of your Earth Day celebration. So here we are. I know. Happy Earth Day. Yeah, plays for the plague year. Wow, that's fun. Um, Rona was uh, our Lady Earth. Uh, I think it was this time last year we were doing that play. Anyway, hey folks, uh, it's time for Watch Me Work and we're going to do what we do every time we get together. We're going to work together for 20 minutes and then uh, I am going to take your questions about your work and your creative process. Uh, while we don't have time to, for you to actually share your work with us, we do have time to talk shop and talk process and give you lots of encouragement and uh, tips for uh, how to keep going, stuff like that. So if you would like to ask us a question during the question time, which will be in 20 minutes, please, uh, Zoe in the New Work Development is going to tell you how to do it. Go, Actually, Zoe. today, Haley is going to tell us. Go, Haley. Yes, Haley, tell us. <laughs> hey, Haley, tell us, tell us. Hi. So at the end of the 20-minute work session, please use the raise your hand function to ask a question. Then we'll call on you in the order of the hands raised and ask you to unmute yourself for your question. Fantastic. I uh, just have to ask one question before we get started. Laura, did you stop by Sally and Tom and leave me a, a green Buddha? Oh, she, you can't. Yes, she did. Okay. Received. Thank you. I can't hear you. You can talk to me after. Here we go. Ready? Okay. 20 minutes. Oh, there you are. You're a meeting now, Laura. Yes, I love the play. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. you know Thank I'm you. a race junkie. <laughs> Thank you for the green Buddha. Here we go. No. 20 minutes. Ooh.
Okay, that's the work time. That's the work time. Now we have the play time. No, that's the work time. Now we have the talking about the work time. So if anybody has questions, um, feel free to ask me and I'll, we can talk shop. All right, hi, Timothy. You can unmute yourself whenever you're ready. Not yet. Yeah. Oh, there you Good go. Now? Oh, fab. Okay. Hey, Timothy. Hey, Hisselty. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Cool, cool. Um, I I think I've probably asked this before, but um, but I could just use a reminder because I'm kind of in the thick of this. Um. How do you manage working on like two or three, or in my current case, four projects at once? Mm -hmm. I've, I've been working on, I worked on one and I put it aside and I went to another one. And since then, two more have kind of come back from the dead and demanded my attention, but I'm not done with these other ones yet. And uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so I'm wondering if you, Sure. And any tips sure. or pearls of wisdom? It's such, it's such a great years. problem to have, right? I mean, to have so many ideas, yeah. more than one thing going, that's, that's mm -hmm. a real, that's a real blessing. I just, you know, I mean, hopefully you have different, uh, they're in different notebooks or different files on your computer, mm -hmm. or you have different, uh, you know, like I have a lot of these notebooks, you know, for example, for different projects, I have bins, uh, you know, in boxes or whatever, or out boxes that I keep them in. So just to keep them separate. And during the day, you could say like on a Monday, you know, I don't know what your time is like during the day, but you could say, I'm going to work for one hour on this project. I'll work for 30 minutes on this project. I'll work for an hour on this project. I'll take a walk. I'll work for 30 minutes on this project. You, you know, you keep them all like moving along and uh, they'll reach points of completion at, at maybe different times, but uh, you just keep them all moving along, you know? Okay. You just know you can do it. You, you just have to divide up your day. You have to be just more focused with your time, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's like, I'll I'll be like, like I'm only going to work on this one today and then I'll work on that one tomorrow. And then it starts taking on, you know, a bit of momentum. So you want to stay with it, but you don't want to neglect the other children. So, right. um, right. you know what I mean? So that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of, mm -hmm. that's kind yeah. of the spot. Yeah. You just don't, you just divide up the time. And even if you just, you know, yeah. work on one project for most of the day and then spend 15 minutes looking at the other project, it's just like, okay. I'm just going to touch on these right here, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that works too. That works really well, but it's a great problem to have. Like I said, I should, I should always have such problems, right? Right. <laughs> anyway, thanks as always. Thank you, Timothy. Thank you so much, Timothy. Emmanuel, please unmute yourself. Thank you very much. Um, Are you from France? Yes. But you I have a different background today. I, well, I'm in New York. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh, okay. Welcome to New York. Thank you very much. Yeah, it took a while to get here, but we're here. So. Yay, fantastic. Um, so thank you so much for holding these sessions. They were definitely a through line and a kind of saving grace, helping to uh, keep things going all the way over here. So um, fantastic. Yeah. Um, so my question, it was actually very similar to Timothy's. I have um, two projects at the moment. Um, uh, more specifically, I'm feeling extremely stressed because I have a bit of a time crunch. Things that were out of my control meant that there's a lot less time uh, to do uh -huh. that. Um, and I'm feeling very overwhelmed. Also, they're on two uh, quite political uh, subjects. And I feel like very 
different. So I feel responsible to go to the end of my research on both of them, mm. which both require a ton of time and energy. And at the same time, knowing that it's impossible to know everything about everything. <laughs> so right. it's just managing that balance um, of the pressure of time. Writing needs time. So it's kind of contradictory. And then how to like feel like the, there's justice being done uh, to the research, but not feeling like you have to know everything. Right. right. When are these projects due, Emmanuel? Um, one of them doesn't have a specific date. It's just ASAP, oh. which is kind of worse. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> and the other one is end of May, uh, 22nd of May. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I think you, you, you sh why don't you just set a, a, a deadline for um, research should stop, you know, on Thursday and just set, set, set a line. You have to set a line because you have to start, you started writing on them or no? Yes. Well, I, uh, yes. And also they're both musical. So there's like also the time division between writing the music for them and the text for them. So, um, right. So, yes, I've started, I've started. Yes. Right. So if you, if you stop the research by Thursday or even Wednesday, stop the research on Wednesday, stop end of day, Wednesday, whatever you want to call that five o'clock midnight, whatever, stop doing research and then divide your time up. Like we were talking to Timothy, you know, sometime on this project, sometime on this project, um, divide it up like that and just kind of inch it forward you know does that help yeah it's 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 you just you got to be sort of uh strict with yourself and just say i'm spending an hour doing uh, an hour a day doing the research and then by wednesday i'm going to stop that's it you know and the i mean any little random thing you need sure you can look up quickly and just get an answer get the right word or get the right phrasing or whatever get the right date but um, for the most part, I'm going to stop doing research and I'm going to start writing. And then I'm just going to do a, a portion of time every day on one topic, a portion of time on the music, a portion of time on the other topic, a portion of time on the music. You just have to dice it up like that. You know? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Thank you. The pressure of like how to like get that away of like, oh, it's got to be a certain thing. It's got to be good or whatever that means. Like. It's got to be it, it. Well, you you just it's a it's something you're gonna have to pr practice and get better at just letting go of. The one thing it's got to be is it's got to be done. It's got to be done by the deadline, and that's what we call in my household good kanuk, good enough. It's got to be good enough because you can get into you know. I'll still be working on it. You know, some people, you know, started to play like 20 years ago. They're still working on it because it's got to be perfect. You know, you got to let it go. It's good enough. It's good enough to make your deadline. And I'm assuming, you know, you'll be able to work on it after your deadline. Is that correct? Or, yeah. So it's a draft that you turn in. And then you'll have time to work on it afterwards. But you have to get over that hurdle. And you have to be okay with letting it be just okay. Because in my experience, letting things just be okay and getting them done and getting them to some kind of point of completion is the one consistent key in getting something to be any good at all. Yeah. In my experience. Thank you very much. Yeah. Welcome to New York. Enjoy it. It's a sunny day today. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. Neil, please unmute yourself. Hello. Hey, Neil. Hi. Uh, thank you so much for um, posting these. Uh, I've been coming for a while, and it, it, I learned so much from from coming to it. Um, even though I'm I'm not actually a playwright. Um, it's okay. I, I'm, I'm a cartoonist, and I um, self publish my own comics. Um, and I've been working on a series for a long time. Uh, and it, um, the, my question is about characters, like mm -hmm. developing characters. I'm, I feel really set with the three main characters of the comic, but um, 
it's important for me that the that the reader really cares about the supporting characters. I've got about a dozen like supporting characters, and I really want the reader to to care about them, to um, you know, uh, empathize with them. Um, but I I fall uh, victim very easily to the sprawl of telling a story where like mm -hmm. you know I work on the backstories for the characters or like have the characters express their needs in the story and then like that becomes really important um, and mm -hmm. the the comic just kind of like grows and grows and grows um, and so um, I'm kind of like trying to figure out what like how to strike that balance of like um, making every character believable um, so that they're not just like a tool for the main characters to like advance the, the like the story for the main characters mm -hmm. um, but also you know not like you said like work on this for 20 30 years yeah yeah although although with the comic you, you kind of could I could. Uh, you could, I you probably could. will <laughs> you could you could you could you have to put the link to it in the chat I love looking at comics and stuff that's For really sure fun. i'd be happy to it's really fun um i would say neil um have you ever read probably have dickens charles dickens i, I haven't is there is there one that you would recommend uh, well you know you could do it uh you, yeah i don't know hard times nicholas nickleby great expectations the list goes on and on they're all you know you could look up wikipedia and maybe wikipedia has a a a, a an idea of which one is the most popular or something, you know, but what I, I bring up Dickens because <clears throat> Charles Dickens, the novelist has a great uh, ability to have you follow a minor character and weaves them in to the major story. And that might be what you need to do so that they're not just a minor satellite character with their own needs and stories. Ah! Out here, well, where are they? Uh, they're leading us down this garden path and not helpful to your major story. But they so ask your minor your minor characters how they're related deeply to the 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 story, the major story, the forward movement of the major story. Bleak House, that's a great one. Read Bleak House. It's kind of long, but man, it's good. You know, it's the su it's summer's coming. Read it. And someone put audiobooks. Yeah, yeah, audiobooks. Okay, okay, okay. But come on, read a book. Open it. Go to the library. Oh my God, go to the library. Do you know that the library no longer has overdue library book fees? Did you know that? Yep. You can just like be late and they won't penalize you financially. So anyway, Neil, that's what I would suggest. Um, a lot of the Dickens books have um, illustrations, which are fun. You know, he's he's got, I forget the name of the chief illustrator who illustrated in Dickens Day those novels, which were serialized, of course. Right. Yeah. Bleak House is a great one. Okay, cool. Thanks yeah. so much. Sure, yeah. sure. But just again, think about how your minor characters are crucial to your major story. That could help. Yeah. Thank you, Neil. Cool, thank uh, you. Hi, Selma. You can unmute yourself. Hi. Um, uh, my question is, basically, I feel like when I'm writing, and I'm sure like a lot of, like almost everyone deals with this, but um, it's just like this, like just like fear of judgment and like overcoming that and overcoming like, or maybe how to like really deal with like an inner critic. I've heard like a bunch of different things. Like I went to theater school, so like. There, there were different like tactics like fighting the critic or ignoring the critic or like giving in to the there was a bunch of different techniques that they would use so I'm just curious what you would um what advice you would give in relationship to writing yeah that's a great question Salma um you know respect the critic how about respect the critic? They got something to say. They're very smart. Oh, wow. But you know, do you have like a, how's your relationship with uh, your mom? Or your, you have a good relationship with your mom? Yeah. Do you listen to everything she says? Uh, no, but sometimes I wish I do. 
Yeah, but you looked up at the ceiling, which is it? Tell. <laughs> uh, no, but <laughs> right. Okay, so that your mom's like, you know, smart. Your inner critic is smart. They've got things to say, and you don't have to listen to them all the time. Right. That goes into my other question that I have, which is like making decisions and like sticking to a choice. Um, it's like, how yeah. do we know, like in our writing, like when we're drafting, for example, like how do we like know that that's like, do we ever really know that that's the choice that we should be making for the character or for the story? Um, I think um, in, in my experience, I know because I just keep sticking with it. It's like, are you married or do you have a like a life partner? No. No. Well, see, you know, like you get married and you go, some days you go, and some days you go. And so, you know, you you know, because you keep, you show up the next day and you put some time in. That's how you know. I Who was it? Emerson, I think. I'm going to say this poorly. Emerson said, I know by going where I have to go, something like that. Or he's also said, do your work so that I may know you. You just got to do it, Salma. You just, I mean, it sounds bad like a Nike ad, but it's true. You just got to get a writing time every morning, right? Or if morning is your favorite time or maybe evening is your time. Which do you like better, morning or evening? Morning. Great. So get up in the morning. I would suggest not look at your crack pipe i'm sorry your telephone yeah no okay. I know. Yeah, good okay don't don't do that because there's nothing there for you yeah. okay so get up in the morning and do some writing and just do it every day you got to start showing up regularly and the the gravitational pull of the work will pull you in and when you're in doubt you can talk to the work okay. does that make sense yeah. You know, when you're in doubt, talk to the work. You're, you know, the the writer, um, what's her name? Oh, the artist way lady, Julia Cameron, has those morning pages. Have you ever heard of the artist way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Morning pages. Those are interesting. Uh, you know, she's done a lot for a lot of writers and artists of all kinds. I like to call daily writing, not journaling, because it seems to minimize it. I call them prayer pages. That's those on those on your prayer pages. You get to talk to God or however you imagine the higher power, you know, you know, right. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you, you daily, you write in your notebook, you write your prayer pages, you get organized toward the higher power. And then if you have a question about, is this the right thing for my character to do? See if you get an answer, okay. but putting the, t there's no, uh, placement there's nothing you can do better than to put daily time into your writing and the more time you put in and the more you show up for yourself the fewer questions you have and the fewer the less you're bothered by the inner critic or the outer critic because once you get to a certain level there are going to be critics who write for big publications who are going to give opinions about what you do and you have to keep going regardless and you have to train yourself to do that uh okay and you have to keep coming back to communities like this where we care about you and we're going to encourage you so that hopefully the the voices, the positive voices in your head that are encouraging you are louder than the negative voices that are discouraging you. One more thing I'll give you before I is what, be very mindful of your self-talk. I've talked about this before. Your words go out of your mouth and into your ears and you're literally hypnotizing yourself all day long. You want to make sure that what comes out of your mouth, when you're talking about yourself, you're like, oh, I don't know anything about my characters. I don't, you know, blah, 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 blah. you might as well just vomit into your ear, you know? You know what I'm saying? I know, that's funny. <laughs> right? That would be really funny. Why would you vomit into your own ear, right? But that's what you do when you give, like, you know, negative self talk. You're just puking into your own ear. So, like, don't do that. Give yourself some encouraging words. Okay. 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 Thank you. And, and ask and come back because we're here most Mondays. Well, I, the last time I came here, I was it was two years ago, and you gave me advice to write for ten minutes every day, and I how did it go? It did it for like two years, and it 
it like changed my <laughs> like literally changed my life. Okay, so I'm a, so how about now 20 minutes, girl? Okay, so give the 10 oh, minutes. I, okay. Come I, on. Come I, on. Whoop. I wrote for an hour today. <laughs> an hour. Okay. So I'm a, how about an hour every day? <laughs> okay. Just just put the time in. Continue to put the time in. You're doing everything right. And if you hear those critics, just go, thank you. I know you're really smart, but talk to the hand, honey. I got work to do. Yeah. Make it a game. They're your friends. They're just trying to help. Oh my God. They're like an auntie who like talks too much. Make it, make it, make it, make it. Okay. Okay. They're lovely. Critics are lovely. They're lovely. They just want to help. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Selma. Uh, Rocky, please unmute yourself. Hey, Rocky. How you doing this week? Good. How are you? I'm good. Cool. I was wondering, actually kind of like Neil's question, but I wanted to ask your tips, advice, or tricks on crafting effective antagonists? Tricks? <laughs> Try. Well, the first thing I do is get a, a rose quartz. No, I mean, go. And then I get a harmonica and I, um. Oh, well, actually, that's that's not bad. What does your main character want? An antagonist is someone who is is going in the opposite direction of the main character. Is that correct? Just so we all know, I didn't go to grad school, so we got to have these definitions happening. All right. Uh -huh. So, think of what your main character wants. Like, I want to get, I want to cross the street to see what's on the other side of the road. Right. I would be the the the, the hero of the story. So the antagonist would be someone or something that keeps me from crossing the street. Someone who wants to keep the main character from getting what she wants, what they want. For very valid reasons. And they, of course, the antagonist thinks they're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh -huh. It's math. It's basically math. Like, you, you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. That can you can and then and then look at some of your favorite pieces of literature or your favorite comic books, and see like 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 Spider Man, mm -hmm. Spider Man. It's interesting in the Spider in the in the Spider Verse, Spider Man's uh, people who are against Spider Man are all similar to Spider Man, but they're not right. Like mm -hmm. Spider Man's. Yeah, uh, what do you call it? the villains are all like scientists who have like had a difficult time very mm -hmm. interesting right peter parker is a scientist who's also having a difficult time it's interesting superman the people against superman are people like superman but just like flipped right mm -hmm. so just think of that just take your character and flip them and see if they you can see another character there okay i don't know that's why i'm just making this shit up right now but maybe it'll no. work yeah, no, I was thinking about Spider-Man today. So I feel like Spider-Man, there you go. Connection. Okay, thank you so that much. Doesn't work. Pick up a rose quartz. I'm gonna go get one. Yeah, because it's a love. You know, you can feel the love for yourself. Isn't it lovely? Look at that. It's just so, and they're pretty. They're pink. What could be better? Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Narissa. You're next. Please unmute yourself. Hi. Um, Narissa, you. How are you doing with your relatives? Oh my gosh. Thank oh you for God. asking. <laughs> uh, very, very good, actually. Just just came from the main relative and uh, feeling very, very excited to move forward. Uh, I took your advice about the three characters and it, of course, exploded. Everything opened up and I'm really excited about what's moving hey. forward. So, yes. Woo. So my next question, hearing, I didn't have a question, and then I heard, I think it was Neil, and then you recommended um, Charles Dickens. I'm looking for a recommendation about an absurd playwright. Yes, Christopher Durang. <laughs> but like any other um, absurd, I really just kind of want to read some of those. Um, I have a book. 365 days, 365 plays. So I have that one, but also looking for any any recommendations of absurd playwrights to look at. I just need to absorb, um, and that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, 
anybody have any ideas? They can put them in the chat. I, again, I, I, uh, maybe I'm going to say you have, okay, come on, new work development, come through dramaturgy, super friends. I got, I got you. I got you. Okay. Um, I'm thinking of Inesco maybe. Yeah. Inesco is a great one. I, I see a couple of my uh, Maria, Irene Fornes, Pinter, um, Nerissa, you also mentioned Durang. So are you interested in absurdist with comedy? Is that something that you're curious about? Yes. Yes. Okay. But also I'll look at the other stuff as well. So right. um, thank you for Beckett. I, you know, yeah, yeah, I know Beckett, but I'm like looking for, I'm looking yeah. for some, some others as well, just to absorb, but yes, comedy. Absolutely. Right. Great. Um, I absolutely. would also offer um, Brandon Jacob Jenkins um, is I think another good one who loves to go with absurdity and especially appropriate that's currently on Broadway, I think is a really interesting one that might touch into what you're speaking to. Um, I think of the work of Dave Harris as well, who did Tambo and Bones. Um, but yeah, I think this is great. I love what's in the chat and we can also keep some ideas rolling. But those are two names that immediately came to mind when you said absurd and comedy. You guys are awesome. This is wonderful. Here you go. Thank you, Amrita. Yay, Dramaturgy Super Friends. All right. <laughs> we still have time for one or maybe two more questions if anyone has a question they want to lift up. Hi, Nina. <laughs> you can unmute yourself. Hi, Haley. <laughs> um, my question is, how do you, um, I, I guess like for my own artistic process, I tend to uh, like, um, like pour, pour the heart, pour the heart onto the pages. And sometimes depending on what I write, it can be very draining. So my question is, how do you take care of yourself if you are writing about things that are uh, emotionally heavy or take a toll on you to engage in the process of like writing about? Oh, that's a great question, Nina. That's a great question. I would say, um, you know, pace yourself, you know, don't think like you have to get it all done quickly. Um, but it's a it's a muscle. I mean, the heart is a muscle, as you know, and and pouring your heart out, pouring the heart onto the page, as you say, it is uh, it's an activity that you need stamina for. It's like running a marathon or two or three or running a marathon maybe every day. So you want to make sure that you um, that you pace yourself and surround yourself with with lovely things, too. You know, so you're not just like locking yourself in your room, working, working, working constantly, you know. Um, and also, you know, double up on your spiritual practice so that you're, you're doing self-care things that are, while they're not that expensive, they're very helpful to help you feel good, you know? Um, and also talk to friends, make sure you maintain your connection with your friends, you know, or your, your colleagues, you know what I mean? Don't, don't isolate yourself, be around people, um, while you don't have to tell them what you're writing about, which might not be good, but you can certainly just be around them to have sort of an alternate uh, way of being in the world when you're working that intensely. You know, does that help? It does. Yes. Is there, maybe this is just like a fear thing, but is there a line where it's like too much, too much pouring? Where, like, where, <laughs> is there a boundary I should have like mentally for uh, engaging like that? I don't, I, I mean, I think everybody has their taste, you know, and different communities have their taste and different demographics have their taste. So I think you just have to test the line, you know, I mean, what is, what is too much of anything? Do you know what I mean? You have to, you have to see. And if, you know, it's also, it's like, I play music, like I play music in a band, you know, and sometimes the people take solos and the solos are very long and winding and heartfelt and beautiful and sometimes they're long winding heartfelt too winding and they become self-indulgent you have to be mindful like when am i just 
showing my feelings because I want to show that I have feelings. When am I showing my feelings to help tell the story? I feel like as long as you're showing your feelings to help tell the story and in service of the story or in service of the work, then you're appropriate. You're, you're in the ballpark. But once you start just wanting to show people that you've been through something or that you're how smart you are, a lot of people do that. Some people, they write and they want to show people how smart they are. And that I think is self-indulgent in my opinion, you know, so just keep them, keep uh, an eye out or an ear out or a heart out for for yourself as you, as you work. And you can always trim back also. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Kayla, will you please unmute yourself? Hi. Um, my question is how to how to get back on the road um, with long form writing. Um, like you've written the outline and you you've, you've stuck to the outline, and then a, a narrative thread takes you off on a tangent, and then suddenly, you, like you're in the weeds and you don't know how to find where you were going because you've created so many other trajectories with these other um, tributaries of narrative and story and character. Mm -hmm. how, right. How to get, you know, just how to get back. So you're not, you know, as you said earlier, still working on it 20 years later. <laughs> Oh, I'm so, it's so sad. But some things take 20 years, you know, so it's not bad. It's just I was thinking of the perfecting thing, like mm -hmm. when, you're, when it takes you 10 years to write it and then you spend 10 years picking at it because you want it to be perfect, which is uh, not something that I do, but some people do. Um, I would say if, if you, you have the outline, you have the outline you said. Yeah. Um, is there any chance you could go back to the outline? Like to rewrite it? And... No, no, you have it. You said you have it, right? Yeah. Can you just see where you went off the road and go back to that place? I, I'm, yeah, I guess I'm not sure if it's still valid. Right. Right. You could try rewriting the outline. Is it a big labor or is it a, a fairly quick thing, you know? Yeah. Um. That's a good question. I think, I mean, maybe there's some fear around that. <laughs> what, to rewrite the outline? Yeah. Like that it's, like that it's just, an, that it's another tangent. Oh. Well, I mean, you're, you're like at a fork in the road. You can go back to where you were before you jumped off the road. Yeah. And continue through and finish it, you know? Yeah. And sort of take the tangent and sort of, cut it off if it were a tree and it had a branch you take that branch and you cut it off and you say this is a separate thing mm. it's going to be this other thing over here i'm going to stick to my outline okay you can try that if you don't want to rewrite your whole outline then i would say stick to the one you have take the tangent and cut it off and stick it in the ground and let it grow into something else okay i like that okay thank you you're welcome Oh, thank you. Please unmute yourself. Hey, Crystal. How you Hi. doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Oh, thanks. Good, good. Um, it's less of a question, more of an observation in this process um, with this particular play. So I found that like, you know, um, this play was inspired by a dream and that like, because there are, because it's, I've realized that this is a tragedy. The play is a tragedy. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's been hard to swallow. Mm -hmm. um, and even going into the revision process, it's been hard to, you know, go through it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I, 
I don't know if there's like this um, grand expectation of like of um, for the for the play itself or for me as a, a person or a writer or a, a black writer or or you know to um, create this to to bring it to justice you know um, justice for this character I, I remember when you said to make sure I take care of the character um, I guess my question is like even though I have this draft and you know I come with drama, I do. <laughs> um, and I'm on the second um, revision. Um, how do I continue to take care of this character, even though it's a tragic journey, you know? Or am I just too close? I think it might help to stop labeling things. Labeling? It's a tragic journey. It's a tragic journey. It's a story. Things happen. You know what I mean? I think I think a lot I hear people label things and then you get set in what it is. Um, it's a story. Try to try to just be give yourself some room to like have the experience instead of telling yourself what you're doing. See what I mean? Kind of. You don't need to. Well, you don't need to label it to write it, do you? I thought it kind of labeled itself. Okay. Well, no. well, I don't know. I'm just trying to give you some room because you got to get to, you got to finish it, right? So I'm trying mm -hmm. to sit in here finding ways to help you have a little room around your mental concept of it, which seems to be getting in the way of your ability to just finish it. So just tell the story. Just tell the story. As much as you can, just let the characters be in the story. Um, you know, I, I I I don't sit around thinking, oh, this story is a tragedy. I, I I don't I don't know. I don't I don't label stories like that. I just try to tell them, and let people who receive them put labels on them. Hmm. You know, as much you know, and they can label it in all sorts of ways. But I, I leave the labeling to the audience person. And I am just the teller of the story. I just wanted to come through. Um, and if sad things happen, if happy things happen, if sad and happy things happen, if, you know, um, you know, you, 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 see, you, see, you see what I mean? I yeah. You just give yourself as much room as possible so your spirit, your imaginative spirit can do its great work. As much room as possible. Mm -hmm. to give my imaginative spirit. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Like, yeah. So just, just, and you just want to find ways, find ways to game the system, find ways to game your system, find ways to make it possible to keep going, whatever that is. Okay. No. Okay. It's six o'clock. Beep, 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 beep. I had a suggestion today, but I'm gonna leave it for next week because it's six o'clock and we're gonna to turn to a pumpkin. Yes, and just wanted to share with everyone that we actually have a few weeks before our next Watch Me Work. So we're regathering on May 13th. It is already on the website and the calendar so you can yeah. sign up. And then just wanted to do an extra special plug for SLP because Sula and the Joyful Noise will be performing next Monday at Joe's Pub at 7 p.m. So for anyone in New York who wants to come down, see the concert, I got to see the first one and it was fantastic. You know, please go to the Joe's Pub website and oh, get your thank tickets. You. Thanks, Amrita. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're going to have a great show. We put on a great show, Joe's Pub... April 29th, Monday at 7 p.m. Oh, this time next week, I'll be in soundcheck. Well, yes. <laughs> right, I forgot. Okay. And those of you come down and see Sally and Tom while we're plugging some stuff, come on down to the public theater and see.